about that to get us up and running on the vlog. 31 pounds and eight ounces of Unity Common Cup. I can't believe that the season's got off with a 30 pounder for the maiden vlog. <sighs> Gave me an absolute beating on first light this morning. Took out one of the other rods, fell to a solid bag, which is a tactic we're gonna talk about later on. I'm not gonna uh, mess around. We're gonna take some stills and get her back. Well, what an absolutely fantastic way to kick off my second season here at the Guys Syndicate of the Linear Fisheries. Um, still absolutely blown away by that. To uh, catch a 30 pounder on the first night of the new season, it's just, <laughs> it's the reason I go fishing. It's the absolute buzz that, uh, that's a crave for. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, as mentioned, we're here down the linear syndicate there's three lakes on site uh, we have unity which is where i'm fishing now this is actually uh, the biggest of the three lakes um i think it's somewhere between 26 to 28 acres excuse the goose in the background <laughs> sorry about that noise um yes about 26 to 28 acres and about 500 fish in here but the style of angling on unity is one that i absolutely um, enjoys fishing uh, in amongst weed, relatively shallow water, but it can occasionally be at range. And uh, anyone who knows me knows that I don't need any excuse to uh, start sending it along. It's uh, a style of fishing that I really, really enjoy. Uh, but there are two other lakes here at the Syndicate as well. You have uh, Yeomans, which is the first lake you come to, um, which come through the car park. And it's the first lake I fished um, when I got my ticket last year. Um, I haven't done that much time on it purely because of. The stock not just here in unity um, which you know there's 40 pound ghosties in here as well as uh, 40 plus mirrors um, but gaunt is the third lake on the complex and the one that draws most of my attention well at least it did um, last year there's uh, at a guess it has to be at least 130 plus fish in there all the way up to the albert which was caught close to 57 pounds uh, last autumn by a guy called Graham and congratulations to him uh, DNA lad who thoroughly thoroughly you know he worked all season long for that so um, I was chuffed a bit for him when he caught that but yeah I will definitely again be spending most of my time over at Gaunt's um, we did have a look at there when we first came in uh, last night I had a brief chat with uh, another lad on there um, and most of the fish had pushed from the top bowl um, which is where quite a few, few were caught during the week uh, around to the sort of island area but most of the pegs there were taken. I did have a look further down the lake um, in a swim called the river um, they do tend to get in there in the snags in uh, spring when spring's really starting to kick in you know you used to see the bloom some of the flowers coming up a bit more sunshine but it just didn't feel right and it would have been a real gamble to uh, to drop in there um, so what I did do was drop in a swim on unity which is called the car park funny enough because it's near the uh, car parks you can fish on but what the swim does do is give me good access to a central area of the lake um, I'm not fishing that far out um, as unity goes but if I need to I can easily push much much further into the middle should the fish start uh, 
showing at range, but I didn't really have that luxury last night when we first got here. Um, like I say, it was coming on dark, and my go-to tactic whenever I arrive on a late Thursday night is to get three solid bags out, and they're just an absolutely devastating one-bite method. Um, and it also allows you, should you not be in the right place or in a quick overnighter, and you're moving on to the next day to move without having committed to too much bait. And it's something that I've been very, very um, conscious about not doing, is putting too much bait in on the first night, seeing the fish elsewhere the next day and having to move. So like I say, three solid bags went out. Um, it was absolutely <laughs> abysmal conditions for PBA bag fish. It's got to be said, it was a bit misty, drizzly, and um, yeah, we had a little bit of a mare, shall we say, but uh, we'll gloss over that one. Um, we were off to a good start, or so it seemed, because just before 10 o'clock, the right hand rod absolutely melted off. And I've not played a fish, or I should say a carp like that, that has come so close to being a catfish or a marlin in the way it fought for, I don't know how long. It kited hard left um, around the lake before swimming straight at me. And at no point was I in control of this fish. It was just going absolutely berserk. And I'm not exaggerating when I say, I felt the rod thump when it hit the weed bed or the snag that eventually it cut me off in. Um, I was pretty dooming, shall we say, to put it mildly. Um, but like all anglers, we had to get ourselves back together, re-rig the rod, get it back out there. And just for first light, that 31 pounds and eight ounce common ramped off and it's still got me smiling for, uh, from ear to ear now. Um, we see the morning out now on the solid bags, but something Unity um, does like is a bit of bait and the fish really do respond to it quite quickly. Um, it's relatively shallow and given that it's so, so mild today, um, I fully expect that they're up for a bit of a feed. We're not gonna overdo it, not um, you know kick the backside out of it. The things will be kept quite simple. Uh, a bit of boily crumb, DNA bug is uh, my absolute first go-to, especially when the weather's cold, but I'll be using it throughout the year. A bit of sweet corn and some low oil pellets. Um, and we'll change over to fishing uh, my D-Rigs. Uh, I've got no shame in saying that since I started using them last year, um, it has absolutely changed how I think about um, presenting rigs on the bottom. A bit nervous when I first brought it uh, onto here, but you know I've never had anything but success with it. Um, the first three sessions I used it here on Unity, I had 37 takes and caught 35 fish, and the two that I did lose, were two fish that just got absolutely impaled in weed beds. Um, you know, that's just the nature of the beast. So we're gonna be putting them on a little while. I'm gonna bait up the area that I'm fishing at the minute. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy this cup of tea, still bask in the glory of that uh, 31 pound common and enjoy the morning. See you in a little while. Okay, so, We've given it the morning bite period now and nothing else has happened, unfortunately. Um, I didn't really expect it to. Truth be told, conditions have absolutely died off. There isn't a, a breath of wind and it is pretty mild. Um, given the time of year, it's highly likely that the fish are pushing into the snags, some of the shallow water around the lake. So this is a perfect opportunity now um, to switch what we're doing to something I mentioned earlier. We're gonna be fishing uh, three normal rigs if you like on the bottom my d rigs and i'm going to get a, a little bit of bait over the top while the fish aren't there so when they do return hopefully um, everything will be set in place and there'll be absolutely no disturbance ready uh, for bite time it does tend to vary uh, due to the time of year on here but i found that mornings and evenings especially in unity have been when the bites have come so got through the morning now we're going to get these out into the pond a bit of bait over the top and then uh, i'm gonna have a bit of lunch myself see you soon
Well, the Roger on the dance floor now, and they all went out first time, absolutely on the money. I couldn't be happy with how they went out. Boom, 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 one after the other, right next to each other, exactly where I wanted them. Um, the spot mix straight away afterwards, accurate as anything. Uh, so good when there's a lack of wind um, and you're baiting up and getting your rods out, because it just means that everything can be perfect. So they're going to stay out now for at least 24 hours until they go, which let's hope they do. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm really, really confident of a, a bite. Just going into evening, um, a lot of the lads around the lake have done the same thing. They've used this opportunity. When it's quiet, the fish have clearly pushed off. They're just doing their own thing for a bit to get everything sorted. So good angling all around from everybody, it looks like. Um, just going to talk briefly now, while there's a lull in the battle, about uh, the solid bags that we used to catch that 31 and a half pound common earlier. Um, it's such a simple, simple, but devastatingly deadly tactic to use. Um, and you can't really mess it up if you just follow the basic principles um, correctly for a rig. I just use four inches of a supple braid um, and a piece of fake sweet corn on a hair. Um, I know a lot of people like to use pop-ups or wafters, um, etc., in bags, but I just find that if you're tying them in advance, pellets will naturally dry your hook bait out so it can affect the buoyancy. With fake corn, the buoyancy will always be the same and you could tie hundreds of bags in advance you know, if you really wanted to. And you know from the day you tied it to you know, the day it goes in there that it's going to be fishing exactly how you wanted it with the hook, barely wafting um, just above the lake bed so it'll get absolutely inhaled. Um, when the fish comes over that pellet and that's what I think the fish are after it's not really the hook bait that I want to stand out it's purely there to negate the weight of the hook so when a fish does come in and suck the pellet up it's you know they're bang in trouble as soon as they come into contact with a three ounce lead it, it's all over um, and the hook holds that I get from that are absolutely you know phenomenal it's just um, like I say a four inch braid and there's a little line liner on there I always like to have a kicker where I can apart from on my uh, illusion rigs and um, tied in a solid bag. Now the solid bag mix is DNA's crayfish mini mix and it absolutely stinks, but by God is it good. It's unbelievable. The amount of fish that's caught me since I've been using it solid bags it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, so if you've not got yourself to a shop and got yourself some of that mini mix, I strongly suggest you do um, and get it in your solid bags. But something else I really like to do is inject it uh, with liquids. Um, it's far too early in season in my opinion to be putting oils and such like into your mix. So I like to use um, the beta stem from DNA. Um, I'm not a bait guy but it's got something called HCL I believe it is isn't it. Don't ask me to repeat what that stands for. Um, but all I know is that every time I inject it with a bag I really feel a lot more confident um, when it goes into the pond. Especially when you know it's going out for sometimes 12 hours during late winter, um, early spring, the hours of darkness that really really helps to to pull the fish in um, and once it's injected especially when you're fishing long distance I like to have my bag super super tight um, it just helps the uh, the bag fly out there a lot lot better um, and again at night when you know you've got to be really precise you're casting to horizon markers you don't want it wobbling in the air like a sack of potatoes or a badly stuffed pillow um, so I take a lot of time when I tie my bags make sure they're done right um, and they've gotten the money and it obviously worked for a third about 31 pound common so I'm just going to chill out for a little while now, probably get my head down for a bit because I've only got uh, a couple of hours kip and uh, hopefully prepare for the onslaught a little bit later on. So we'll see you guys in a bit. guys just a quick update it's just gone half past seven it's um, completely dark outside now um, nothing else has happened since we last spoke which is not surprising but maybe a little bit disappointing um, I was quite hopeful that we'd have another one um, just going into dark but it may just be the case that it took the or it's going to take them a little longer to push into the more central zones um, now that we've gone to dark the lake is also really busy now which is good um, because it will help push the fish around. There was quite a few empty swims earlier where 
uh, you know, there's a lot of dead water where they could quite easily just go and hide and get away from all the angling pressure. So yeah, the rods have said exactly where they were from where I did them um, in the late morning, you know, they went out perfect. There was absolutely no need to redo them. You see a lot of guys just feel the need to you know, redo them um, just for last night and it's just for the sake of it really. And like I said, I wanted everything um, good to go, no disturbance in the swim, which there hasn't been now for a good seven, eight hours, something like that. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens tonight. Hopefully we'll see you really soon with a big fat carp. Um, certainly happy to wait it out if they carry on with the stand of the last one. We had 31 pound common, which is, you know, it's just a, an awesome, awesome fish. And there's some massive ghosts in here that we've already spoken about. Um, I had one uh, last summer, one of the ghost commons at 33 pound, another one that was just under 30, but there's another three in here um, that go up to and over 40 pounds. So I definitely really want to, uh, get one of those this year so yeah let's see what happens tonight hopefully see you soon um, and if not we'll catch up in the morning Good morning, and what a lovely morning it is. I had to wait a little bit longer than I thought uh, for the next bite, and um, this came on about five o'clock this morning. I'm certainly not complaining. 23 pounds, a couple of ounces of glorious common carp. Condition's gonna be pretty much the same today, just might be a little bit more overcast, so might make things a bit tricky. So we'll have to see uh, what we can do about getting another bite. But for now, I'm gonna get some pictures done and put it back. Well, what a great result it was catching that 23 pound common this morning. The bite came just after five o'clock. Um, I was a bit disappointed that we didn't have any further action before that, but at the same time, it's, um, it was flat calm last night. I didn't hear any fish jumping around the lake during the dark hours. So there might've just been the one bite in it. So yeah, very, very happy we got that. We've got some great photos and it was a cracking way to, uh, to start the day. Uh, mid morning now, the sun's up and it's, you know, early spring the fish are probably once again pushed off the middle zone where I'm fishing into the snags into the shallow water um, to warm up which makes sense because you know they're cold-blooded animals it's their natural instinct to do that but it's given us a good opportunity to get all of the rods redone and get a bit of bait over the top so that's what we've got gone and done all three rods are absolutely perfect once again and um, we've put another six spots of corn pellets and crumb over the top um, which is all we need really you know you don't need to bait heavy early spring they're still waking up the water temperatures are still cold so you don't want to overfeed them it can sometimes hinder hinder your um, chances of getting bite if you really overdo it but what i did do with all three rods was put the same hook bait on each which caught us the fish uh last night or early this morning i should say and that's an orange 10 mil fruity delicious pop-up now whilst it is a pop-up on the illusion rig it doesn't act as a pop-up it critically balances the rig so that the hook is completely flat on the lake bed which is how i want the rig to work it's not designed to be a pop-up presentation um, you want it as a wafter or as a bottom bait uh, presentation which is what we've done and i've also flossed about a dozen red maggots on top um, like i said the water's still cold early spring so naturals will still work well for you um, 
and it may just be the edge that gets us another bite so yeah done that with all three they're out there now there'll be no more disturbance in the swim uh, leading into the evening hours because everything's set and uh, there's certainly no need to redo everything um, so yeah I think I'm gonna spend the afternoon enjoying the sun I've just come back from a couple of months in Jamaica with the army where the weather was a lot warmer than this I can assure you uh, when I got off the plane it was absolutely freezing cold we had that cold snap and also uh, had snow the first night I was at home so I was yeah I was in the hurt locker with that one and I'm still acclimatizing with the British weather so I'm gonna enjoy the sun get a little bit of admin done and uh, I don't expect anything to happen during the day today it will probably be evening hours early morning so unless something miraculous happens we'll see you later I was not expecting a bite until it had gone completely pitch black. This is an absolutely awesome turn up for the books if we can get them in. Swans have seen him now. Oh, still a long way out. Oh, go around him, go around him, please go around him. Well, that's one problem solved. There's a big weed bed down here to the left. Let's just see if we can coax him in nice and gently over the top of it and get him in first time, no dramas. <sighs> Certainly feels half decent. It's so hard to tell what you hooked into in here. First on the left hand rod's gone as well. They've normally been, what have I had? One on the right and two on the middle. You know, they are quite close together, but I don't care which rod goes. We're absolutely scratching for bites at the minute and every single bite is worth its weight in gold. Come on, keep moving, keep moving. Just feel it grating against some weed. He's coming, he's coming. Come on, keep coming. Especially in shallow waters, I like to keep the tip low. You know, the fish haven't really got any depth of water to dive in. So if you're constantly trying to pull them up to the surface, especially at the start of the fight, they tend to go absolutely bananas by keeping it low found that it can make the fight a little less 
dramatic, shall we say. Come on, baby, keep coming, keep coming. Still a long way out. surface there. Let's come off. Exactly what I want. Not cheap leads but I'd rather lose 50p lead than 30 pound fish any day of the week. Especially with uh, even the early in the season the amount of weed already up in unity. Don't want that lead on. waders on so I can only go out about this far. Is a good fish. Oh, look at the width of that. I think he's a dirty 30, all right. You can see that orange fruity delicious 10 mil hanging out of his chops. Oh, yeah. Well, I know I said I'd see you in the morning or some point during the night, but. Um, we've managed to get another one just on dusk and if the vlog was going well so far, it, it's just taken off. <sighs> we've got an absolute worldie here. <sighs> Have a look. Oh, oh took the oaths at him. 34 pounds and three ounces. <sighs> The vlog just couldn't get off to a better start than this. One absolutely magnificent animal. It was the, uh, the left hand rod that went off, again on the D rig. Oh, absolutely blown away. I, I don't even care if I catch tonight when you have a fish like this. One absolute cracker. Well, good morning. Um, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful day. We didn't just uh, manage to get another one bite this morning. We've actually had a double take and gotten both in. It looks like a pair of uh, cracking 20 pounders. Just weighed this first mirror, 22 pound three ounces. 
and it's still well in winter colours. Oh, yeah. Absolutely ramped off down the middle rod. Oh, there we go. Yeah, one absolutely cracking fish. And like I said, I've got another one in the net to show you. So let's get a couple of stills done and put this one back. Here is number five. A couple of ounces under 22 pounds, but I couldn't care less. Um, it's been an absolutely awesome session. Um, we did also lose one during the night. Um, I had every angler's worst dream where the weed is stuck on the line and gets caught in the tip ring. By the time I managed to untangle it, the fish had uh, managed to work the hook hold and got itself free, but never mind because we've had two absolute crackers this morning and it's going to be a great way to finish this vlog. We're going to get some stills done and get this lovely, lovely common on a glorious Sunday morning, mothering Sunday, back home. Well that's it for this one guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to click the like and subscribe button because it's going to help out the channel a ton and I'll see you on the bank very, very soon.